So as we are reaching at the last days of the church age, you can see that we're literally right at the end. I mean, if you're looking at the world around you, there's no doubt we're like at the end of the church age, unlike any other, especially the past couple of weeks with how things are going really chaotic, even on the conservative side, not just, uh, Demo uh, not just Democrats or liberals, but even on the conservative side, how things are falling apart for them. Yeah. It's just only a matter of time where everything just goes chaotic. Yeah. And I'm going to give you a nugget. The world longs for something after that. Uh -huh. But I kind of mentioned that to you several times as a clue. So let's see how great our world is coming. So according to post-millennial and amillennial doctrine and Calvinist doctrine and covenant theology, we ought to bring in the kingdom and the world's getting better and better. So let's see how great our world is turning along. So great news for Christians is CBS News says, title of their article, Meta announces, so that's Facebook Meta, you might re remember that, it will reinstate Trump's Facebook and Instagram accounts. What a revival! Praise the Lord! Souls are getting saved, man! Our Savior Trump is back. Amen. Talk about, talk about the third great awakening, you know? All right, so let's uh, keep turning on. Now, Adam Schiff, as you know, uh, this guy is one of the people that I disdain the most in our, uh, in, <laughs> in our world. This is the guy that was uh, democratic in belief but he had power and control over intelligence, remember. So this is, the, this is the scoundrel that I distrust the most. And obviously, as you might recall, because the Republicans took over a lot of the power, then you can guess what happened to Adam Schiff. So in CNN Politics, title of their article is Democrat Adam Schiff announces bid for Feinstein's U.S. Senate seat in California. Well, of course, he has yeah. to come to our state, you know, <laughs> of course. Who wants a loser except our state, you know? I, I don't know which one of you want him, but he got ejected, obviously. <laughs> Poor guy, you know, from the New York Times, title of the article, McCarthy, the guy who took over, you might recall, after, you know, after one round of votes, obviously, and McCarthy won <laughs> after one round of votes. <laughs> That's a joke, obviously, but... <laughs> Title of the article is McCarthy ejects Schiff and Swalwell from Intelligence Committee. Good riddance. Good riddance. Did you forget Swalwell? The guy during, you know, when uh, the, you know, the things happened the last two years when that disease spread out. And then everyone was worried about connections with China. And then his relationships, his girlfriend and his connections. And then I can't believe the Democrats said, we want Swalwell as the guy to be part of intelligence. Mad world, man. Mad world. Man, I'm glad they're ejected, man. There must be at least a little bit of common sense left in our country. The funny thing is that uh, I'm going to read this article, and it's, uh, this is from Fox News. The funny thing is, the title of the article, CNN labels Adam Schiff a Republican during rare clash on Russia collusion that turned out not to be true. So they accidentally put the R, you know, when, uh, when Adam Schiff was speaking on the screen, but, you know, it's obviously should be a D, Democrat. But they put R, Republican, next to him when he was going back and forth uh, with the reporter named Bash. And the funny thing is this, is that Schiff actually conceded to this about some of the things where you would think it's kind of sleazy or weird or you do not trust this guy on how he handles the process. As Bash pushed back against Schiff, uh, let's see right here, Bash replied this, let me give you another. He says that this is part of a pattern ahead of the first Trump impeachment. You said the committee had not spoken, had not spoken to a whistleblower. In fact, that turned out not to be true. The Washington Post said so in their fact check. So Bash was calling, uh, calling out Schiff for that. 
So you know what Schiff conceded? The Washington Post identified that, yes. Before the person became a whistleblower, they sought advice from the committee. When I was asked the question, I thought they were referring to whether or not we had brought the whistleblower in. I should have been more clear in my answer. <laughs> Good riddance. He should be ejected. I don't trust a loser like that, making up excuses. Now, some of you uh, may have heard about uh, Project Veritas with their video with that huge leakage going out concerning about Pfizer. So supposedly, the Pfizer uh, director of research, and um, uh, he's, so no surprise, and then that's where you can squeeze all the information. I, that's one thing I noticed. That's one thing I noticed. You can squeeze information out of those guys. But anyways, <laughs> all right, continuing on, okay, so during... During the, uh, when one of the people was recording the conversation with Pfizer director of research, they actually caught him where he was spilling out secrets of what happened the past two years, okay? So I'll call it uh, Fauci's fungus. We know that was such a deadly disease and that everybody, you know, was scared of that. So we'll call it Fauci's fungus. So... He was spilling out secrets about Fauci's fungus where people were uh, watching the video and he supposedly, and you can watch the video and take a look at yourself from the uh, Project Veritas video, but he was basically pointing out that it was tied to gain of fun function research. So Pfizer uh, had to post an article in their website Pfizer responds to research claims in their official website. Friday, January 27, 2023. And they said, allegations have been recently made related to gain of function and directed blah, blah, blah research, and then they denied it. But the funny thing is that there was a second video that came out. The second video that came out, this is from the main wire, and the, t the title is Pfizer Director of Research Freaks Out after spilling Fauci fungus secrets in second project, Veritas undercover video. So what happened was Veritas, when they, obviously, they heard about Pfizer saying, no, 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 this, uh, this, this is all denial. They're just misconstruing the context of the video. So O'Keefe, the founder of Project Veritas, he's not gonna let that go. He made a second visit to him. And boy, he was not nice, all right? He was. He was so angry, and then he uh, took the tablet, threw it down on the ground, you know. Remember, they're very peaceful, loving people. You got to remember that, okay? So, obviously, he did it in love and peace when, when, when he dropped that tablet on the ground. But when he was spilling it out, the funny thing is that it seemed that his rants from the Pfizer director of research was more of confirming it rather than denying it. Rather than going by Pfizer's article of denial, he was instead saying, look, this was all a joke, what I said. Yeah. It was just a joke about gain-of-function research. Wait a minute, I thought that uh, if you looked at the video, it was misconstrued and it's not gain-of-function. But now this uh, director is saying, I was joking when I said it was gain-of-function research. Yeah, come on. So I, it makes it weird. It makes it weird. So I'm not saying that uh, I believe uh, Pfizer's side or Veritas's side, but what I do know is this, is that that is plainly suspicious in my point of view. It's just plainly suspicious in my point of view. And then Marcus Rubio, he's the U.S. Senator, he actually sent a letter in his own website. It's titled, Rubio Sends Letter to Pfizer CEO on Alleged Gain of Function Research. So if people watch the video, then they can determine for themselves. What happened to James O'Keefe in NPR News? The title is Project Veritas founder James O'Keefe is forced out at the right wing group. So actually his own board basically kicked him out. And then if you read the article, I think he did a 45 minute video and then he was bawling his eyes at the end. 
whether he's sincere or whether it is true that he was mishandling the funds for something or whether it's the leftists trying to find any dirt on him when they, you can find plenty of dirt on the leftists. Either or, the point is, you can see right here that it's chaotic. Yeah. Whether you're left or right, yeah. you're trying to set everything in order, you're not gonna bring the world in order. That's right. That's right. And conservatives can cry, oh my goodness, we lost the founder of Project Veritas. What's the world gonna come to? We lost our hero. Hey, I, if you're a saved believer in Jesus Christ, the hero is Jesus Christ. Yeah. And he don't save the day until after the world goes through the tribulation and falls apart. You're not gonna prevent this world from falling apart. It will fall apart. That's the idea. So look at our crazy world today, right? Crazy world. Yep. It's going so insane, yes. uh, both right and left side. Right. Now, uh, Carrie Lake, because she kept uh, denying the election counts, and she keeps fighting for it. She keeps fighting for it. Then an article came out from Axios. Arizona Secretary of State requests Carrie Lake probe for possible campaign violation. <laughs> now they're uh, trying to pounce on her. Why? If you question the established order or the way of doing things, uh, the leftists will get on you. They will find anything to get on you. Be careful who you're biting against. Then uh, an article from CNN Politics titled George Santos tells House Republicans he wants off of his committees until issues are resolved. Now you might say what's going on right here. Well, he's actually a member of the Committee on Science, Space and Technology and the Committee on Small Business Fed uh, Federal Pros uh, and the Committee on Small Business, excuse me. But they're investigating his finances and actually he made some false statements supposedly regarding his ex professional experience education, history, and identity. So a lot of liberals and Democrats took advantage of that uh, Republican to expose the dirt on him because plenty of those Democrats had enough of their dirt exposed, so they're doing the same on them. What is it? It's all a cat fight. It's all going back and forth. That's expected. Like I told you so many times in the teaching, it's the pendulum swinging. Yeah. When, when you think you get one victory, don't think that the other side concedes and says, we lost. No, they're going to fight harder. And when they fight harder, this side is also going to fight harder. And when that thing swings, everything just breaks apart. That's the fruit of the Great Awakening revival right now that we're seeing in Asbury. All right. Because Christians can bring in the kingdom. Uh, and Trump, our savior, is now, you know, during the elections that are coming up, you're wondering, how is it going to look with DeSantis? It's going to really divide things even further, not unite. Yeah. No, nothing is uniting. Things are just splitting apart even more. Title of the article from The Hill is DeSantis responds to Trump attacks by pointing to his re-election. So, uh, Trump, you might recall, he was criticizing DeSantis, but then DeSantis mentions, it's kind of like a little bit of a jab, I was the one that got reelected. <laughs> so I don't know if he really meant it as the way you people are thinking right now when I said that, but you can see the, it's amping, the division, the fight is just amping even more and more. And then... In AP News, the title of the article is, Sorry, Not Sorry, Some 1-6 Rioters Changed Tune After Apology. So in other words, after they said the deadly, the deadly Capitol riot, there were some people who uh, apologized or they pled guilty in front of a federal judge. But then after that, it looked like their apology was simmering down and they were supporting more of Trump's side or the people who are for the riot or the protests or whatever you want to call it. I don't care. OK, I wasn't there. OK, but whatever the point is, 
that these people, it seemed like that they were toning down their apology and taking back what they said. So the liberals are getting upset. They were lying. They changed tune in front of a federal judge. So we can see how much order and law and order is building up in our world. Everyone blasting each other. It's every time you, when you compare it back to the 80s or back then, whenever you read a news article, it's blasting so-and-so. News is not news anymore. It's blasting so-and-so. It's chaotic. And then, uh, obviously, you've heard about the news. The New York Times, title of the article, 71 commands in 13 minutes. When Tyre Nichols couldn't comply with impossible orders, police assaulted him. So you can guess they, uh, they reported about another person who was assaulted by the police and this is contributing to the BLM and everybody. So racism, right? Well, you know, you know what's funny right here? This is from CNN, okay? Title of the article from their opinion. The police who killed Tyre Nichols were white, were black. They were black. But they might still have been driven by racism. <laughs> so even if you're black, you're not safe in the liberal news media. It doesn't matter now. It doesn't matter. And then uh, what happened to this news? This is from uh, the CW69 Atlanta. Title of the article, Black Republican New Jersey Councilwoman Found Shot to Death in Her Car. They don't really care about your racial identity. What they care about is, are you on my side? Are you on my belief? And I thought we were all tolerant of people's beliefs. Isn't that United States of America? What happened to that? See? Somewhere along the line, there's one thing you've got to learn. This is so obvious. Somewhere along the line, there's no such thing as we can tolerate all of each other's beliefs. There's no such thing. Somewhere along the line, you will make a stand. As we continue to see the fall of the Democrats and their idiocies and their stupidities coming out even more and more, the title of the article from Newsweek is Greg Gutfeld, so he's a, a part of the Fox News program. Believe it or not, he became is king of late night. So it's not Stephen Colbert, Jimmy Kimmel, or Fallon. The title of the article is Greg Gutfeld is King of Late Night as his Fox News show beats Colbert, Kimmel, and Fallon. Believe it or not. Uh, it airs at 11 p.m. And then uh, they mention right here, he scored 2 million viewers nightly and 405,000 the key demographic for advertisers. And then Colbert is at best 1.89 million at best. And then 395,000 in the key demo. Then Fallon was third and Kimmel was fourth. And in our democratic state, because the Democrats are all falling apart, guess what happened to our beloved state? Title of the article from Fox News, California loses 500,000 residents in two years. As Americans flee high cost, well, who would have thought? Who would have thought? What y'all doing here? What am I doing here? We must be the idiots. We must, we must be the idiots, man. The Mormons are very happy because it says right here, residents are fleeing to the state of Utah, you know, Nevada and even Texas. All right. One brother there might just go over there soon. Yeah, he might live there. Yeah. He just doesn't tell us, so anyway. <laughs> the title of the article from the New York Times is Scotland's Leader Quits, Citing Toll of the Job. Well, what happened to British politics? Remember the other prime minister where I, uh, I'm going to quit, and then the new one came in and I quit, you know, and then <laughs> what is going on over there in happy Mary England? Right. The whole world is stark raven mad. So our president gives the State of the Union address, right, where everybody should be united and supportive. But in title of Fox News, <clears throat> Biden booed during State of the Union for claiming GOP wants to cut Social Security 
Medicare. And then Donald Trump, he replies, uh, this is from Sky News, so that's a, more of a conservative uh, source. They mention in their title of the article, Donald Trump delivers real State of the Union address. <laughs> so he counters it. It's like rubbing dirt on Biden because Biden got booed. Then Trump starts to post his real State of the Union like, hey, I'm the real president. Oh, man. See the pendulum swinging left and right, left and right. And then the title of the article from New York Post, uh, another blooper from Biden? Yes, even in the State of the Union. The title of the article is Biden a laugh riot in Flubfield State of the Union opens with a Schumer gaffe. So what does he call him? Instead of majority le leader, uh, Chuck Schumer, he addresses him as minority leader. <laughs> He's still back in the past, man. His head's still not there. Uh, what about his press secretary? Remember the other press secretary, Saki Jen Saki, who just like I quit and everybody's quitting. So then the other new one, I think her last name's pronounced Pierre. So when she took over, she's doing no better. When the there was an incident going down in Canada, which I'll tell you soon. The title of the video from the Rubin Report is "Watch MSNBC Host Struggle to Ignore." W.H. Press Secretary Mispronouncing Canada. All right, so I think it's worth hearing, okay? So I will play it for you once, okay? That way you can hear it for yourself. Canada. Because it's part of a NORAD. There is a, the NORAD is part of like a, a part of a, it's a, it's a, what you call a coalition, a consortium. A consortium. A pact so of a pact, okay. exactly. And so that's why we were able to do that. Again, it, we didn't do it on our own. We did right. it in, in, uh, in, uh, it clearly in, 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 in step with uh, right. Canada. Canada. Uh, <laughs> now you notice that her speech was not normal. She kept going, uh, 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 it was, uh, it was, uh, it was, uh, you know. And then she said, Canadia, you know, or whatever. <laughs> so notice how, uh, notice how the Democrat officials are just all falling apart. Our leaders are all falling apart. These are the people we trust, we voted for, we rely upon to save our country. But... What men learn from history is that men never learn from history. Mankind at his very best. I thought we we're at the height of education, huh, and technology. <laughs> the Lord has to prove every time that man at his best is altogether vanity Amen. and it's folly without Amen. him involved. Amen. Amen. Now, a lot of you have heard about the Chinese balloon. For some yeah. of you who haven't been looking at yeah. the skies, yep. uh, that, this has been a big concern actually. The title from AP News is U.S. Downs Chinese Balloon Drawing a Threat from China. And then from the New York Times, title of the article, Another Chinese Balloon Flew Over Latin America, China Confirms. Okay, so now we're getting Chinese balloons over our head, and we're just hoping and praying to God that it's nothing harmful inside or it might drop the ball on us, right? But believe it or not, Epoch Times mentions, title of the article, balloon with three hypersonic missiles tested by China in 2018. So this has been going on a while. And China claims in CBS News, China says more than 10 U.S. balloons have flown in its airspace over past year. <laughs> Then there are clash reports from the title of the article from The Hill. Trump and Biden admins clash over reports of previous Chinese balloons because they're putting the blame on each other. Biden, you're the one that's uh, it was during uh, your administration that those balloons went out. And then Biden's accusing the same with Trump. So everyone's pointing fingers at who threw the balloons up in the air. <laughs> This is, this is chaotic, yes. chaotic. Amen. Everything's chaotic now, and everyone's getting scared too. You see right here what's going on is we get, things build up more chaos, yeah. more anger, and more fear. Right. 
These are powerful emotions that demand we need order. Come on. Okay. But let me continue on. This one was the recent big scare. Title of the article from uh, ABC News is High Altitude Object Shot Down Over Northern Canada Temporarily Closing Montana Airspace. So now Canada is getting involved with the uh, uh, U.S. And then, peop and then they shot it down, whatever this object was. And actually people, when they looked at this object, it looked like some kind of octagon-shaped thing. Mm -hmm. So then they were like thinking, oh my goodness, is this a UFO? Uh, and believe it or not, what was trending online was Project Blue Beam. Project Blue Beam was trending all over online. For some of you who don't know Project Blue Beam, you can be one of those trenders and look it up. But that was where supposedly we had a lot of UFO sightings and government has been involved in that. So a lot of people have been looking into that Project Blue Beam thing. And then from the Detroit News, the title of the article, and this is uh, from Michigan, Michigan UFO leader on object shot down over Lake Huron, it wasn't a UFO. So then a person who was into UFO studies, he delved into it and he even had to admit, no, I don't think it's a UFO. So then what was it? Well, um, the United States and then the government, they had to shoot down that object because it's a national threat. What was that threat? The title of the article from Aviation Week Network, Hobby Club's Missing Balloon Feared Shot Down by USAF. <laughs> so it was a hobby balloon that, some, that there was one club claiming that, hey, it's been missing, and what happened? So out of this uh, embarrassment, the title of the article from Fox News is Lawmakers Mock Biden After UFO Address. CCP is laughing at him. Why? Because Biden, he addressed that UFO and then he mentioned that uh, it was something like uh, it was a balloon or an object that was used for weather, recreational or, or scientific purposes or something like that. So he worded it as professional as he could, but people knew what that was. You know, it was a stinking hobby balloon. Wow. That was where, oh man, a national threat, shoot out the missile, pew! <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're so terrified. <laughs> what do you think China thinks about all this, yeah. right? Yeah. That's why some of the lawmakers are saying they're just laughing at us. Now, think about this. What if this was very real, okay? What if the people's fears were real that this was a UFO? And what if it really turned out that the government was involved in that? If you know your Bible, the Antichrist, he suddenly comes out and pops to the scene, right? The Antichrist, who is a demonic being, he just suddenly comes out of nowhere, maybe like an alien, pops into the scene, and when he pops into the scene, he establishes a one-world government, right? So it makes you wonder, can UFOs then be tied to government? It's very possible in the Bible. If that's the case, what does the Antichrist want? He wants religious worship, right? So look at right here so far. You see UFO connected to government, connected to religious worship. That's going to be the Antichrist, right? So then, if we're going to have things today that build up to that, is that very possible? Actually, believe it or not, it is more possible than you think. This is from the Washington Post itself, and it's an archived article dated February the 1st, 1999. When seeing and hearing isn't believing, that's the title of the article. But what they've done right here is during the war that they had, and then the government was... Uh, putting down uh, intelligence and concocting stuff 
due to Saddam Hussein. They actually created a voiceover. So they were all the way during the 90s, they were creating some kind of big booming voice where they were hoping that uh, the Muslim population or the religious population in Hussein's area, they would see some kind of phenomenon in the sky, hearing a voice and assume that to be God. And the government want to use that to take advantage of it and for their own benefit. Wow. <laughs> Washington Post, man. Read the article. That's crazy. When seeing and hearing isn't believing. All right, the author's name is William M. Arkin. Date is February the 1st, 1999. It's crazy. Wait a minute then. Could they be more tied than you think? Where the government might get involved to try to make some kind of aerial phenomenon for the Antichrist and then use that to control the world through religious means, not just political means. If you think this is big enough, let's see how government and religion, church and state is more intertwined than you think. What have you learned from our history class? Those two should never be mixed, right? They have to be separate. Why? Because it's more of control, that's why. It's more of control when you do that. Isn't it a coincidence that a lot of these steps are into place for the Antichrist to receive worship any moment as he falls out of the sky somewhere where the government and religion can all fall to its knees to him. Title of the article from Gulf Today is World Government Summit to begin in Dubai on February 13th to host Musk. Again, Elon Musk is involved. And then supposedly Klaus Schwab and other big shots, supposedly. And then at the same time, the title of the article from the New York Post, the breathtaking moment Lightning strikes Rio's Christ the Redeemer statue. Now, uh, you know that Christ the Redeemer statue in Brazil? So believe it or not, they mentioned, and it, there was a video that hit viral, but it happened, uh, let's see right here. It happened uh, three and five times each year. That's like strange at a Jesus, right? That the world worships the Jesus statue, lightning strikes it, what, three to five times a year. And it makes you wonder what the Bible says about the coming of Jesus Christ is like lightning. If Jesus comes that way, what's Satan's job? To imitate Jesus Christ. Don't you think he wants to come down that way as well? Makes you wonder if he might take a stop to Brazil one day as a lightning strike and say, I'm Jesus, I'm here. As all this UFO government and one world religion is happening all at once, the steps are in place. Basically, all the pieces in the game are in place, people. What I'm trying to tell you is it can happen any moment. So look at uh, Matthew 24, okay? You have your hand there, right? Keep your hand at 2 Corinthians 11. Matthew 24, the Bible says in verse 27, for as the lightning, see that, yeah. cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the what? Son, Son of man be. That's Jesus Christ. Yeah. What's the devil's job? To be a false Christ at verse 24. For there shall arise false Christ. You know what people call this lightning? They called it divine lightning. Some, but, uh, a person named Braga wrote in Portuguese. Sna he snapped the photo around 6.55 p.m. Friday. And then the photo garnered over 168,000 likes since it was posted. Uh, I in Instagram. In Instagram. Why people are connecting all this with God? With Christ? If government, think about this. If government can... Possibly, all right, I'm not saying they are involved, but they do have capabilities. It's been proven, all right? They have capabilities. If they have the capabilities of ushering in 
some kind of God for the people to observe and follow through the air like a voiceover, right? And this was in the 90s. You wonder how advanced technology is now. It could be more of an image to real life or AI. The list can go on. But anyways, if the government has that capability to do that out of the sky, do you think they can have the power also to bring in the weather then? Oh, yeah. To bring in the lightning as well? To manipulate that? Right. Right. To present the coming of Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. Well, there was an, uh, you heard about the earthquake in Turkey, right? Mm -hmm. And there was a rumble and rumors and concerns about, they wonder if the United States, the government, caused it through their program. And you might go, what, really, there's a program? Dig up HARP, H-A-A-R-P, right. all right? If you dig that up, you'll be very concerned. Yeah. You'll be very surprised. All of this is factual about H-A-A-R-P, HARP. Yeah. They have the power to do a lot of these stuff, Amen. all right? They'll give claims that they can't do something big or major, but when you read about their power and capabilities, even in some of their minor things, you be disturbed. Your blood will turn cold. Basically, what I'm driving at is they do have capabilities to conjure and manipulate things where some Christ can come out of the sky and pretend he's Jesus Christ and use that to control the world. Why? Because if politics can't control the world, then religion can. Okay? That's something to think about. Title of the article is from Geo News. Harp was earthquake in Turkey created by United States. This brings the other concern then. Isn't the timing very coincidental? The timing of all of this coincidental with Jesus Christ coming and the whole world worshiping, why is it that all of a sudden you get a bunch of so-called Christians now saying, you're right, Jesus Christ. I mean, there's a revival that's spreading and Jesus is amongst us. Hence, the Asbury revival. For some of you who don't know, it's a so-called revival meeting that's going on in Kentucky uh, for the past, I believe, weeks, if not days. And they've been going nonstop. Now, if you watch the videos, listen up. If you watch the videos, your emotions will be stirred and moved, and you think Jesus was, and the Holy Spirit's moving. If you're not a Bible-believing Christian who already knows right doctrine. Mm -hmm. Come on. If you don't know doctrine, yeah. you can get sucked in so easily, and these people, their hearts are in it, their tears are on it. Their sincerity is involved in it. And I think there is genuine love and humility involved right here. So then people are like, wow, this is a revival like no other people are confessing their faults one to another, getting right with God. And that is the devil's trick. A lot of gullible Christians get deceived by this. Unless the only exception is this. The only exception where you don't get caught into this mess is if you know doctrine. Yeah, that's but right. if you don't know doctrine, you will think the Holy Spirit is in there. And, God, and that Jesus is moving and this is truly a revival. Now, if you know your doctrine, we know what's right and wrong. But here's some other things. What if the devil wants to destroy right doctrine, right? If you de-emphasize doctrine, that means you don't have a right belief, correct? If you don't have a right belief, if you don't have your doctrine straight, then the devil can put a wrong belief, right? If he puts a wrong belief there and puts this wrong belief with, I'm going to mention Jesus, so don't worry, then he can get you. He can deceive you. That's how the Antichrist can deceive the people is put himself as Jesus with a wrong belief, with all of emotionalism involved. With this good feeling and heart and love filling in the air and tears, how can that be wrong? It won't feel wrong unless you know doctrine. This is a safeguard that's rescuing you. 
because this is from Wikipedia's article in 2023 Asbury Revival that they posted. They actually mentioned that sodomites were uh, posting it on social media and then recommending it and giving praise to the revival. But guess what? It was, it's not there anymore. I wonder who changed it. I wonder who changed it. Some non-denominational. Some person that didn't want to get in trouble. Some Christian scholar. Because they always like to cover their tracks. But they mention this. You know who's in this meeting? Methodist, Baptist, Episcopal. Oh, nothing wrong. And Roman Catholic groups participating in its spread. Oh, Roman Catholics are involved in this. So, what is this? What's the Antichrist job? A one world what? Religion. It's to do a one world religion. Break down the boundaries. As long as Jesus is mentioned, then we're okay. But you know what the devil's going? He's trying to deceive the churches first. That way, the churches who have lost friends and family members, they can teach them wrong stuff and make them think, see, this is Jesus. And the lost people who don't know any Christianity or doctrine, they'll think, oh, this is Jesus. And all the Antichrist has to do is, aha, I just have to imitate that. Now, this is a Twitter from, uh, this is uh, a post from Elijah. And then uh, the name is Edward Versailles. So if you look up his account, he posted this with a picture. Day eight and my seminary friends, Asbury, are still leading worship. Did you know POC women and queer students have been leading worship all eight days? Both student bodies have lended themselves, lended themselves into being us towards the throne of God. So there is no condemnation of sin there. There is a toleration of sin. Why? When you get rid of doctrine, you tolerate anything. Your lifestyle, your doctrine, your belief, whatever it is, we all worship God together. And then there's a video from The Supernatural uh, Life, which is pretty weird, Daniel Adams. And he has a video title, A Demon Manifested at the Asbury Revival. Is this okay? So supposedly there was a demon that was in there and then the video was spreading out. And then when the video was spreading out about, and this person, I think it was a woman saying, I cast this devil out in the name of Jesus. And then the, there was like a demonic noise, ah, like that. And the guy watching it was like, oh man, that's so cool. And it, there's no doubt, this is not revival. This is chaotic. This is all kind of tolerating all spirits to be involved here that you can't tell a difference of right and wrong. As a matter of fact, the evidence is, if you listen to the Asbury people in charge of it, they even had to, they even mentioned many times, it's a hard thing to balance like order and the movement of the Holy Spirit. They kept mentioning that. You know why? Because they knew this was getting out of hand. They knew it was getting out of hand. As a matter of fact, this is even more evident when uh, the Asbury University itself, title of their article, Statement from Asbury President Dr. Kevin Brown. So then uh, what did he do? He had to uh, point out the schedule change. He said, beginning Friday, February 24th, no further public outpouring services will be held on Asbury's campus. I thought the Holy Spirit's supposed to move, baby. I thought that all everyone's supposed to feel the love. And that Jesus is supposed to move freely amongst all of us. And we're supposed to confess each other's fault. What's going on? He knows it's getting out of hand. This is pure psych, fleshly emotionalism, not spirit-filled movement. Right, right. Amen. Amen. So there's no doubt about that. Oh, by the way, some people are wondering this. If the Asbury revival was planned weeks in advance, it wasn't some kind of sudden outpouring of the Holy Ghost moving. And there are some videos and some people wondering about that and posting articles about that. Uh, there's a video titled Asbury Revival Planned Weeks in Advance 
from revealing truth. If you watch his video, he shows a lot of the documentations. And actually, even the, if you look at the video from Francis Chan himself in the National Collegiate Day of Prayer, it was something where he says, we're going to have all the people together and hold a, uh, hold a mighty prayer. Like this was weeks in advance. So it makes people wonder, I, hmm, did they, did they concoct this? Is this something that they were plotting to do? Is this more of a setup rather than the Holy Spirit moving? So there's suspicion about that. But whether it was, uh, it, whether it was plotted or whether it was genuinely some sudden spiritual outpouring, that makes it worse then. Because if it is a sudden spiritual outpouring and that's not matching in your Bible, the word of God, where you're having all kind of LGBTQ plus the alphabet soup all together with uh, as well as the ecumenical movement with the Catholics. And then where things were going out of hand that even the president said, hey, we need to put a stop, a due date on this then this is a pretty scary thing, don't you think? Mm -hmm. This ain't the Holy Spirit moving then. Right. This is some kind of false spiritual thing or a demonic spiritual thing. As a matter of fact, from CBN News, which is the, the big Christian news network, they mentioned this. On Sunday, Presta explained to her readers, it was love that brought people together for more than 100 hours inside the university's auditorium. There's something so beautiful about love. It's more than a fleeting emotion or a mere feeling. It's what brings people together. I can proclaim that love boldly because God is love. Time brings all this to light, but certainly it is an encouragement. Uh, they also mention that this is such a great thing that's going on because isn't it great where one person mentioned, Kyla Rowell, wrote on Facebook, what can happen when the body of Christ is united in love and not divided by irrelevant things is beautiful. Okay, you, you heard that? Yeah, come on. You know so they don't want to be divided by what they call irre yeah. uh, irrelevant things. Yeah we, know what that is. yeah, we know what that is. That's referring to the doctrine. Yeah. It's all love. Love is what combines us together. No, it brings chaos. It brings chaos. You need to put some kind of order there. So they were arguing God is love, 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 love is God. Hey, don't you know that's cultic? That's an ecumenical thing. That's cultic from the Christian science. That's a cult, right? You've heard of the Christian science. They're a cult. Even liberals know they're a cult, okay? The title of the Christian Science Monitor, they have Psalm 23 here. And me and my members saw that. We were shocked when we were at Rough and Ready. And we saw that in a Christian science store. And they had Psalm 23. And, you know, the King James Bible is, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Right? Yeah. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Right? Yeah. They replace God with divine love. Isn't it crazy that the Asbury Revival, all that emphasis is love. God should be love. His name is love and all that. It's what unites us together. Yeah, it sure does. Yeah. Christian science, a cult. <laughs> You're welcome. Divine love is my shepherd. I shall not want. Love maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Love leadeth me beside the still waters. It was powerful... So that's the verse. Love restoreth my soul. Spiritual sense, of course, you know. Not really, but this should be disturbing to you. That's from the Christian Science Monitor in the title of their article, In the Safe House of Divine Love. You know, that article would match so much with this one, and you can't tell the difference. If I were to post that right now in Instagram and tweet, in the safe house of divine love, and put the Asbury Revival there, all these saved, so-called saved Christians would go, Amen, praise the Lord, and stuff like that. And then if I were to put a couple days later, this was from the Christian Science Monitor. I wonder what they would think after that. See, you got to know your doctrine. If you don't know right doctrine, you fall for this very easily. Because I'll be honest, it sounds good to me too. I would fall for it too. Yeah. I mean, what's, what's wrong? There's nothing wrong unless you know 
Unless you know information, knowledge from the Word of God, then you know what's going on. As a matter of fact, this is scary. From the Detroit Catholic, this is a Catholic news source. Title of the article, Jesus was right next to me. Asbury Revival sets Catholics on fire with Holy Spirit. So Catholics were claiming that Jesus was right there with them. Go back with what the government was trying to do, right? With what the world is looking at. They're looking at some kind of God or Jesus phenomenon up there. Who's coming? And with all this strange aerial phenomenon going on and everyone's obsessed with the sky, what's going to come out of the sky and Project Blue being trending the past week, they're, ex they're waiting. They're expecting, especially religious people. They want Jesus to come in and bring the peace to a chaotic world where right and left is going through such extremes. And if you listen to the Asbury Revival, all of them said, even Fox News was even talking about, you know, in this world of craziness that we're all going through, it's good that something positive came out. And they talked about the Asbury Revival. See, there, the whole world yeah. is seeking for some kind of reli positive religious stability in all this mess. This is paving the way, no doubt, for the Antichrist. He literally just has to put his foot down here and that's it. He's pretty much got all the steps, the pieces in place. The biggest evidence is if you were to think about the three big major religions that the Antichrist will use, and a lot of you know this, Catholicism, Islam, and Judaism. Those are the big three. And guess what? You heard about the Abrahamic family house, right? That they're building? They're supposed to build the synagogue, the mosque, and then the Catholic church building. They finished it. They just finished it. All this timing, man. Yeah. The title of the article from Religious News Service, Abrahamic Family House Changes All the Rules of Interfaith Understanding. The mosque, church, and synagogue complex is a shining monument to uh, tolerance. This was uh, on Thursday, February 16th, the United Arab Emirates officially opened the Abrahamic Family House. They just finished it. February 16th. Even so come Lord Jesus. Like the rapture should sound any moment. Yeah. And when the Christian church gets raptured out of here, then all of a sudden the Antichrist can just simply show up. Yeah. And the world thinks it's Jesus Christ. Isn't it also, look, look, it, it's strange all these, co all these events happening at the same time. You know what also, what also, Mm, music, re, uh, music, worship, service, whatever you want to call it, was also happening at the same time as Asbury Revival? Your Super Bowl! With all that satanic stuff. Yeah. Was it, uh, her name is pronounced Rihanna or something like that? If you watch her halftime, Super Bowl halftime video, which I don't recommend, you see her dressed in red like as a devil, and the rest of them like angels, and it's like falling angels. It's like they're all luring like fallen angels dressed in white while she's dressed in red. It's like Satan and his fallen angels. It just makes you a little disturbed. But if that's not shocking enough, what's even worse is this is from the billboard, the, uh, one of the big entertainment uh, news sources. Title of the article is Sam Smith and Kim Petras. They did an unholy Grammys performance deemed satanic and evil by conservatives. If you watch that, it is demonic. They were doing their hit single called Unholy. And then it looked so satanic. They were dressed in devil costumes. Smith was in a bright red top hat with devil horns. And he was doing the final chorus. And you know what the funny thing was after they finished singing Unholy? The advertisement came out immediately after that, brought to you by Pfizer. Yeah. <laughs> And then a whole bunch of Republicans, they were tweeting and they were uh, posting. They were saying, Pfizer, Pfizer and Satanic Hollywood are meant for each other. <laughs> now, isn't it strange that all this happened coincidentally at the same time Asbury Music Worship Service was going on? This is strange stuff, people. 
Let me close uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, two verses, and then I got uh, four more articles, and then good night to you. All right. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. That's why you have to be wary. You have to be wary of another Jesus. Verse 4. For he that cometh preacheth what? Another Jesus whom we have not preached. Notice in the next one, uh, we're going to look at verse 14, I believe. Look at verse 14. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into what? Angel of light. Do you know what the Antichrist's job is? To be so much like Jesus, so Christian, that if it were possible, it would even deceive the elect. Didn't you know that? You didn't read Matthew 24? I'll read that to you again. Matthew 24 about the Antichrist, right? I'll read it to you quickly. Matthew 24, the Bible says in verse 24, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. People don't read their Bibles. But as long as it's Jesus or Christ, any Christ, especially if he calls out love, let's receive him, huh? All the devil has to do is transform himself into a big blob of love. That's it. And then everybody will love him. All right. Now, I have one interesting thing here. Go to Revelation 6. Revelation 6. We know that the first seal right here it's like bursting through the doors. It's like bursting through the doors. If this thing's bursting through the doors, it's very possible, okay? And I'll put this as theoretical, but I think there's a lot of scripture tied to this. You know what I think? I think if the first seal is right about to burst through the doors, immediately what follows simultaneously, or maybe just a couple days later, is the second seal. I think the world's going to blow up and war and all that's going to happen like following its heels, like immediately. Maybe even less than 24 hours, if not the same day. You might say, why is that? Do you have scripture? Yeah, I do. First of all is Revelation chapter 6 and then verse 2. So this is the first seal, right, of the Antichrist. And I saw and behold a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, come and see. And there went out another horse that was red. And power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. And that they should kill one another. And that there was given unto him a great sword. Notice immediately what follows the first seal is the second seal, which is war, the red horse. But the proof is the first seal itself, not the second seal. Look at the first seal, verse 2. Yeah. yeah, okay, you Bible believers, you know your Bible. That's your problem, okay? I shouldn't have done verse by verse. When doing verse by verse every word made you look ahead. So, All right, verse 2. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, the Antichrist. And he went forth, what? Conquering, conquering and to conquer. He's conquering nations already. That's why it might make sense, verse 4 and 5, war and blood is shedding. Because he's doing little stuff in war, and then it bursts into a big war. Once you get a little war going on, you do know, that, you do know one thing. After 9-11, it didn't took 10 years later for America to say, let's go to war. It took very short amount of time. So if you get a little burst or blow up with the Antichrist conquering and to conquer, guess what? Immediately what follows is nukes going out, war, and everything. And that's why everyone is scared about what's going on with Russia. For some of you who don't know, the Nord Stream pipeline, it seemed like Biden threatened that, uh, oh, we're, we're going to get rid of that, so don't worry. And then... All of a sudden, the Nord Stream pipeline, there was a disaster that happened there. And then Seymour Hirsch, who is a Pulitzer Prize winning uh, writer, so he ain't an amateur writer. He actually wrote an article, How America Took Out the Nord Stream Pipeline. That became a big ruckus. So it seemed like the United States was involved in that. So the angst with Russia and the America 
has hit at its biggest height. As a matter of fact, from Yahoo News, the title of the article is Russia Deploying Nuclear Missile Carriers in Arctic for First Time Since Collapse of USSR, Norwegian Intelligence Reports. That's scary. But even more so from AP News, title of the article, Russia Suspends Only Remaining Major Nuclear Treaty with U.S. You know, uh, you can read the Federation of American Scientists article, Status of World Nuclear Forces. Who owns the world's nukes? That's their official website. You can read that. When you read that, it will scare you. Approximately 90% of all nuclear warheads are owned by Russia and the United States. And those are the two birds that are having angst toward each other who each have around 4,000 warheads in their military stockpiles. Now, can you imagine if one goes off, there's a lot dead, but you get that many, then how much of the world is wiped out? That's why, verse 4, the red horse. So much of the world gets wiped out. It continues on reading right here that, uh, which is pretty scary, United States has 5,428. Russia has 5,977. And this is from the Estimated Global Nuclear Warhead Inventories 2022. Of the world's 12,700 nuclear warheads, that's reassuring, right? That brings a lot of peace to your minds. More than 9,400 are in the military stockpiles. If you want to pray for the rapture, you better start praying for it right now, all right? But I'm telling you what, that hearing all of these events going on, you can see we're like right there. Yeah. Now, it could be, it could be several more years. It could be longer. I don't know. But I'm telling you, seeing all this, it's even more close than ever. Yeah. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I pray that tonight's teachings have made us more aware of what's going on around in our world so that we can be more zealous, more prepped, yeah. and more able to spread the gospel, to minister to people. Yeah. And as the world's dying, going to hell, we know how to handle, deal with them, let them uh, slide off our shoulders, and we just continue on, pressing on for the work, develop wisdom on how to survive in this wicked world with all these uh, politics, demographics, and a wrong beliefs spreading about so that we can know how to minister to these people. In such a wicked day and age, in Jesus' name we pray, amen.